Hello everybody, and welcome to The Daily Splat. It's the 2nd of January 2018, and I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who got in touch after watching yesterday's first video. I've got lots of uh, suggestions of topics from your comments, so uh, at least enough to tide me over probably for the rest of this week, so thank you very much for those suggestions. Uh, the first of those suggestions is a question from a dear friend of mine, Mr Ryan Fitzgerald. Uh, Ryan and I are fans of uh, football, specifically English Premier League football, hence the Manchester United shirt today. I am still a Manchester United fan, uh, even though I don't think we've won a Premier League title since I did the original run of the series. <laughs> so, um, but it's not about that, you know, it's, it's good fun. Um, Ryan is an Arsenal fan and we, uh, you know, frequently... Um, talk football, discuss football, play video games uh, based on football, and indeed uh, that is where we're going to go with this first question. So, grabbing the laptop of questions, here is Ryan's question. Would be interested to hear your thoughts on the rise of player wages in football and whether it's sustainable long term. Smiley face. Well, Ryan, uh, smiley face. In response and uh, yes so wages in football uh, for the uninitiated uh, footballers at least uh, professional footballers at the top level in uh, the top European leagues in places such as the United Kingdom and Spain Italy France Germany uh, they get paid quite a lot um, they get paid huge amounts like the average wage uh, is you know it's, it's not uncommon for a footballer in the English Premier League to be earning a hundred thousand pounds a week at one of the top level clubs. Um, in fact, that might even be slightly below average for, for one of the, the biggest clubs, uh, the likes of Real Madrid or Manchester United or Paris Saint-Germain, uh, you know, these clubs which have huge amounts of cash. Um, so my thoughts personally on, on the rise in player wages, I don't have a particular issue with uh, individuals who are professional sportsmen earning uh, big wax of cash for what is essentially a, um, it's not a lifetime career, you know, one, one is not going to be able to play as a professional footballer at the top level for uh, 15 years is a good career, 20 years if you're lucky, or, you know, a goalkeeper, they tend to last longer, um, but, you know, this is not your entire life, it's not something that you're going to be doing for 40, 50 years, so I don't begrudge them that, I also don't begrudge the fact it's a very competitive field, um, nor do I begrudge them the fact that the reason there is so much money in football is because football is so popular and commercially viable. And whilst the wages are ridiculous, um, the wages are not the fault of the players. Indeed, you know, you look back on um, the footballers who played professionally 50 years ago, you know, the likes of... Um, in the 1960s, as a United fan, obviously, you look at players like um, Dennis Law and um, George Best and Bobby Charlton. They they couldn't just hang up their slippers once they were done. Just pop the laptop down. Uh, what they can just hang up and, and, and do nothing. Um, George Best maybe is one of the first superstars, had that option potentially. But um, in Dennis Law's autobiography, he, he wrote about the fact that when he finished his playing career um, at Manchester City and, and he... He retired um, he suddenly realized he, he had to go and get a job um, because you know he had I believe it was four young kids um, he was living it was the mid 70s he needed a wage and I believe he worked in from memory I think it was like a carpet shop he worked there and then he ended up doing punditry for the BBC and, and things uh, of that nature um, so I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that you can play 10-15 years as a top level athlete and then not have to work again a day in your life. Um, but is it sustainable? Probably not, I'm going to say, um, at this level. I mean, it's it's a big amount of money. To give you an idea, the BBC, picking up the laptop again, uh, have put up a very handy thing back in August of 2017. Um, where basically you could compare your wage uh, to that of uh, some of the world's most well-played footballers. Uh, the example they have as their main one is Neymar. Now, when Neymar moved to Paris Saint-Germain from Barcelona in um, the 2017 summer transfer window, uh, it was a world record fee, but he also uh, receives €865,000 a week. Now, that's £775,000. So, you know, he's he's earning 
millions a month um, as, as one of the uh, best football players in the world it's understandable that they'd be getting a big wage but that sort of money is obscene even by football standards um, it's it's a massive amount now the BBC handily provided a calculator so uh, I entered in the country Australia where I live I entered in um, the annual salary based on uh, the average uh, Australian salary for the second quarter of 2016 which was just over seventy eight thousand dollars and then you can compare it with uh, Neymar. Now, Neymar earns the equivalent amount of money that the average Australian would earn in 10 minutes. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's, that's, that's the average Australian's yearly wage he is earning in 10 minutes. Uh, handily, if you want to work it the other way and find out how long it would take the average Australian to earn Neymar's yearly wage, it would take about 1,017 years. So if you started back at the turn of the previous millennium, in the year 1,000, you would have just earned enough based on the average Australian wage as Neymar earns in a year. So it's, it's ridiculous, it's silly, and quite frankly, <sighs> Neymar at a club like Paris Saint-Germain is a club which is backed by um, uh, by uh, uh, rich uh, Middle Eastern backers. Uh, it's not uncommon in football. Obviously, Manchester City have found um, all of their recent success due to their uh, backing by um, the Abu Dhabi group. Um, obviously, there is a lot of interest. And it's not just Middle Eastern investors, I, I should say. You know, there are investors from all over. You've got American billionaires. You've got Chinese billionaires. Basically, any billionaire that, <laughs> that wants to get involved, they've gone in and they've uh, bought a football club and tried to build a successful brand. Football earns a lot of money commercially from shirt sales. It also earns it from uh, the, the television revenue um, from various countries. The TV packaging deal is worth billions to the Premier League and to the different clubs that play for the Premier League. The TV deals aren't as much for other places like La Liga and uh, the Bundesliga, but they still obviously earn a fair whack of cash from that. Um, the Premier League's one is is kind of ridiculous. and. Whilst the interest is there and the desire to put that money in there um, exists, then players' wages will stay as they are and arguably will rise. Um, but what happens when that interest goes away? What happens when interest shifts? Um, if interest does shift, I mean, uh, English Premier League football is a massively popular sport, um, probably the most popular team sport, I would say, uh, on global viewing figures. You know, I mean, obviously you get things like the Super Bowl, things like one-off events, which are very popular. But in terms of like week in, week out, uh, watchability from around the world, um, the, the English Premier League is, is out on its own. But it wasn't always the case, and there is always the chance that we may see a shift uh, potentially in the future towards other sports. You know, maybe basketball gets massively popular. I mean, it is massively popular, but more so. You know, that sort of thing. It's... Um, there is the potential that interest could wane and this sort of huge amounts of funding that goes into it isn't sustainable and when that happens and the, there isn't that um the vast amount of money to be to be invested in the players then then wages will have to just drop uh, naturally um but i don't foresee that happening at all in the future in the near future anyway uh, without some sort of major global financial crisis so um I guess if you wanted to see it, fingers crossed for another global financial crisis. Um, but yes, it, that's they are just some thoughts. I'm aware that uh, we're almost at 10 minutes, and I did say I was going to try and keep these under five. So um, not so good with this one, but with others, I will do my best. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Ryan. And I hope that for those of you out there, you enjoyed this particular talk. It won't all be football. It won't all be sport chat. It's just based on the questions that are handed in. Um, I believe that was the only football question I received, so I uh, got it out of the way early. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you've got suggestions, please leave them in the comments below or email them as at info at thoughtjarproductions.com. That's info at thoughtjarproductions.com. You can message there and let us know what you think and any questions that you might have. Okay, that's all. Bye.